Hi folks, this is Mike with Eminem Precision Painting and today we're going to go over tools I think every painter should have, um, whether you're a do-it-yourself or a professional painter. These are the tools you're going to need to complete your painting job fast. All right, guys, uh, first tool you're going to need, uh, this, I consider this like a painter Swiss Army knife. This is a, called a five in one. Uh, has a couple of different features on it. Um, first of all, it acts as a scraper, all right? So that's what this part is for, scrape walls, loose paint, peeling paint, things of that nature. Uh, you can use this end for a little screwdriver or to get in corners. This one also to get in corners. Um, this, a lot of people don't know what this is for. This is for when you're cleaning out your painting tools, your roller, you use this to scrape the excess paint out of your roller. Um, Believe it or not, these things hold a ton of paint, so it's going to save you money and paint and materials in the long run. Um, also, what I like to use this for is if I'm going around puttying holes, what I'll do is I'll take the back end and I'll like old nail holes and whatnot, and I'll just tap them in to countersink them. That way, I can also use this as a putty knife, and when I scrape my spackling out, I can just push it into the wall like that, and my counter sunk hole so that's uh, one of the main tools every painter has one of these so get yourself one it, like i said if even if you're a do-it-yourselfer grab yourself one of these and they're going to last you a lifetime so all right guys of course paint brush you're going to need that um this is an angle brush it's a two and a half inch i like to use a two and a half inch it's kind of a happy medium between a smaller and a little bit larger brush some guys prefer three inch but it's an angle sash brush. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it's a purdy. Um, clear cut. Uh, I like these brushes because they're pretty versatile. Um, you don't necessarily need a flat cut brush. Um, you could always use the angle brush for anything you could use a flat cut brush for. So why bother buying two different ones when you could just buy the one? Um, this is really cool for getting like up in corners because of the angle. It has a pretty sharp tapered tip here. So. Yeah, you're gonna want your paintbrush, and now time for step number, or tool number three. Alrighty, moving on. Uh, next tool you're gonna need uh, use a cutting bucket. This is what we call a cutting bucket. Um, what it essentially is is something you can transfer your paint to that you can work out of. So you the, the, you never want to use the paint can you're working out of to paint with. Number one, it's heavy. Number two. Um, your paint is gonna skim up on the top if you're not careful and or dry. As it's exposed to air, it becomes a little more, it becomes drier. So the paint's gonna thicken up, it's not gonna spread as easily. So you wanna keep a lid on your paint you're using. So what I do normally typically is just pour about yay much in this uh, cutting bucket and have a paintbrush and that way I can work out of here. Plus it has a lower center of gravity. And this is, this is what you use to cut it around all your trim and whatnot, so yeah. Get yourself a cutting bucket, use an old painting can. Uh, I've seen people use uh, Tupperware dishes. So yeah, get yourself one of these. And now we're going to tool number whatever, four. Hey right, guys, so now we're at the roller. This is a nine inch roller, it's a pretty old one. Um, but nonetheless, get yourself a roller and pay a little extra money to get quality tools. I've had this, this is an old Wooster roller frame. Um, I've had this shoot, five years and nice and sturdy and and get yourself also uh roller covers this is a three eighths inch roller cover um but yeah you're going to want to use this this is one of your essential tools for rolling your walls so after you've cut in so yeah roller all right guys uh this one is a five gallon bucket of course it should be pretty obvious um Get you a couple empty five gallon buckets. You could pick these up at the hardware store for like three, four dollars, I think it is. Uh, or you can just use an old one that's emptied out. Just make sure the inside's clean. You don't want any residue in there that might interact with your paint. Um, so yeah, get yourself a couple of these. These also act as handy step stools. Turn them upside down. So um, get yourself one of these and a five gallon painting grid. Uh, this It's a lot cleaner when you're the painting grid goes in just like this. It's a lot cleaner when you're uh, painting in interiors. You just put yourself about that much paint. Um, 
get your nine inch roller and this is where you clean off your excess paint and like even out the distribution of the paint on the roller itself. Um, instead of working with a pan, something you can kick or step in or whatnot, this is less, less apt to do that and or knock over because it has a lower center of gravity. Um, yeah, get yourself a five gallon bucket, five gallon paint and grid. That's what they're made for. And we'll move on to the next one. You ready? Next one, extension pole. This is a really cheap one. I do have better ones, but uh, you guys probably can't see right now, but it is snowing like crazy outside. Nonetheless, uh, this is an extension pole. Um, you can use this to reach further, and this, this guy is going to hook right onto the bottom of your roller frame. Dip in the bucket, go to the wall, less bending up and down. And that's what we want to do. We want to save our backs. This also doubles as a stick to beat the women off because painters are awesome. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. No. Um, this is a caulking gun, of course. Uh, those of you who don't know what this is, this is a tool that applies caulking. When you put it in it, it pumps caulking out the end. Um, I recommend... This is a cheap one. You can buy these three, five, three to five dollars, three to eight dollars, cheap ones. I do recommend myself. I use a dripless caulking gun, and what that does is um, essentially relieves the pressure off the back of the caulking once you've pushed it, so that you don't have caulking continuously dripping out when you're not um, using the gun itself. So it sort of automatically just stops putting pressure on the tube itself. All right, so get yourself a caulking gun. You can buy a cheapo, that's fine. Um, spend a little extra money. I think it's like 12 to 15 bucks for a, a dripless caulking gun. All right, caulking gun. <laughs> hey guys, uh, pretty much no brainer. Utility knife. It's good for everything. It cuts stuff. What else can you ask for? Uh, uh. Hey guys, uh, so last but not least, drop cloth. Um, get yourself a regular drop cloth. Uh, some people use the um, moving blankets or whatever. Those work okay. Just not big and it's not meant for painting. Um, nonetheless, get yourself a good drop cloth. A lot of people tend to use like sheets and stuff if you're a do-it-yourselfer. But um, it's not gonna stop the paint. If you get a major spill, it's gonna go right through that sheet and onto your carpet or whatever surface you're protecting. So yeah, kick out a little extra money and get yourself a drop cloth. They do make, I think Trimaco makes a waterproof drop cloth. You can get a four by 15 for like $15. So, and it's gonna last you forever. It's waterproof, uh, it's made some, from synthetic material and paint doesn't even bleed through it, so. Yeah, spend a little extra money, get yourself a drop cloth, keep your floors protected, and... All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this how-to. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Got some videos over here somewhere. Um, and stay tuned, we got more coming up, and we'll see you on the next one. Still looking at me.